so I will begin with uh, my first topic that is furosemide the topic I have divided into four parts first is the mechanism of action of the drug then its effects on different electrolytes its uses and followed by adverse effects so in the mechanism of action before starting that I want to briefly say about the different parts of the nephrons the first part is known as the glomerulus which leads to this proximal convoluted tubules which leads to the loop of Henle then distal tubule and at the end the collecting duct so today's topic is the furosemide which is a loop diuretics so by the name says loop will act on loop that is the loop of Henle so today's drug will act on this ascending part of the loop of Henle so before going to the mechanism I want to say in the ascending limb of Henle for absorption of different electrolytes basically sodium potassium and chloride there is a very important symporter system will operate on this level so in this diagram I have drawn here in this yellow line that is the lumen of the nephron in this green color depicts the epithelial cells of the nephron and this is in the red color is the shows the blood or blood vessels or the vasa recta which surrounds the nephrons this side of the epithelial cell is known as the known as the luminal site and this hand site is known as the basolateral site so here as I told for absorption of sodium potassium and chloride one symporter operates and because of that there will be absorption of sodium potassium and chloride so after absorption of sodium whatever entered into the epithelial cell it actually goes from the inside of the epithelial cell goes out and it enters to the blood but it is exchanged with another cationic charge that is potassium where two molecules of potassium will enter this happens because of one important pump operates against the concentration gradients this is known as sodium potassium ATPase pump so because of that there is expulsion of sodium but there will be accumulation of potassium inside the cell from in from the blood now after that we can say that because of that process there will be accumulation of potassium and some amount of chloride now on the basolateral side of this cell there is a important symporter operates on here which expels the potassium from inside the epithelial cell along with chloride this through this symport system this is known as potassium chloride co-symport where the potassium and chloride will enter into the blood but some of the potassium will still remain inside the cell so what will happen to this potassium yes for that this potassium actually expel from inside the epithelial cells and it comes out from the epithelial cells to the lumen of the nephron and because as the potassium what is the charge it contains yes it contains the positive charge as I know positive charge will create a positive potential on the lumen of the nephron it creates a positive potential again by the law of physics we know that the same charge will repel the same charge so what is the charge is positive charge so positive charge will repel the positive charges that is positive charge but as I know in the lumen side there are another cationic charge or positive charges ions are there in the luminal side those are what are those yes 
those are calcium and magnesium so there will be a, because of this excretion of potassium from this side there will be a generation of high amount of repulsive forces for the calcium and magnesium so what will happen to this because of the repulsive forces the calcium and magnesium should go out somewhere because of the repulsion the where they will go they will go through the inter epithelial cell through the interstitial space and enter in the blood that is how calcium and magnesium absorption goes in this side in the thick ascending limb of loop of henley because of the generation of this repulsive forces and there will be a entrance of this cationic charges through this intercellular space and it will enter into the blood stream now the mechanism of actions of loop diuretic that is furosemide furosemide basically will be excreted from the proximal part of this tubules and with the help of organic ion transporter system after secretion into this from the blood into the lumen of the nephron it will come with the help of the flow of the fluid inside and ultimately it will reach at the thick ascending limb of loop of henley where i was saying few slide back what is that important transporter is operating yes that is the sodium potassium chloride symport system the co-transport system which operating here and because of that there will be absorption of calcium and magnesium which simultaneously goes on so what will the furosemide will do here it will block the channels it will block the this symport system sodium potassium and chloride symport system so what will the effect of that there will be no absorption of sodium no absorption of potassium no absorption of chloride if there is a no absorption of sodium there will be no amount of potassium will be accumulated as the potassium also not absorbed so if there is a no amount of potassium will be accumulated inside the cell there will be no expulsion if there is a no expulsion it will not create any kind of positive potential on the lumen of the nephron if it is no cre creation of any kind of positive potential there will be no amount of repulsion if no repulsion will uh, will be generated at this point so what will happen yes calcium and magnesium will be not absorbed from this side because no repulsion it will remain at this at the site of lumen nephron it will be not absorbed in the blood so ultimately what will be the effect of the furosemide here loss of sodium loss of potassium loss of chloride loss of calcium and loss of magnesium so if my query is there if what will happen to this sodium whatever not absorbed from this side this extra load of sodium where it will go from the physiological this uh, anatomical diagram of the nephron whatever sodium has not been absorbed from this side it will ultimately with the flow of fluid it will ultimately goes to the where this is the collecting duct it will goes at this level but main problem is that here whatever sodium will come usually exchange with potassium that is the main problem of this drug why here at the collecting duct level if there is a if we give a increased or extra load of sodium at this side what will happen now on the other hand side to make a electronic balance electronic balance there will be increased amount of potassium excretions so what will happen you can because the sodium is not absorbed in the thick ascending lip of loop of henley it will come to the collecting duct level at this level so there is an increased amount of sodium so what will happen to the potassium there is an increased amount of potassium excretions or expulsion from this side so what will happen to body potassium level yes it will cause hypokalemia and then this is the very important side effects of furosemide that's how it causes 
hypokalemia another thing at this site only there is another antiport system operates that is for sodium and hydrogen from where sodium usually enters to the cell but in exchange with hydrogen ions so what will happen now if we give a extra load of sodium at the collecting duct tubule collecting duct level so what will happen to this hydrogen ions yes there will be increased amount of expulsion of this hydrogen ions if there is an increased amount of expulsion of this hydrogen ion through the lumen level so what will happen to the body hydrogen level status yes there is decreased amount of hydrogen level in your body so what will be the effect it causes alkalosis it causes alkalosis that's how it produces alkalosis furosemide so what is the important side effects of the drug as i told it causes hypokalemia because of increased amount of exchange will occur at the level of collecting tubules from sodium and uh, for sodium and potassium it causes hypocalcemia because of there is a no repulsive force will be generated at the level of thick ascending lip of loop of and lip so same goes for hypomagnesemia we will going to lose calcium and magnesium at the same time hypochloremia but it causes hyperuricemia because it will prevent the excretion of uric acid from the proximal part of the uh, convoluted tubules now as i told it also causes loss of hydrogen ions because of the exchange process so what will the body will suffer from it will suffer from alkalosis the other side effects it produce hearing loss and allergic reactions so what might be the therapeutic uses of this drug the therapeutic uses might be of this drug because it causes excretions of sodium and along with water it is mainly used in different cases of edema it edema may be in the form of because of the heart failure because of nephrotic syndromes is also useful in cases of acute renal failure because because furosemide will cause generations of prostaglandins in the glomerulus and that's why it causes dilatations of the efferent arterioles so that's how it is useful in acute renal failure what was the side effects for furosemide regarding potassium it causes hypokalemia so same side effect profile can be used for treatment of hyperkalemia the same goes for calcium what is the side effect yes it causes hypokalcemia loss of or uh, excretion of calcium from your body so same the side effects can be applied for the therapeutic uses it causes hypercalcemia so another important aspects of hypercalcemia in very important thing that is your tumor lysis syndrome in tumor like a syndrome when the tumor cells in your in some patient's body when they have been given some radiation therapy or chemotherapy so what will happen what will be the effect is yes, there will be lysis of tumor cells so what is inside the tumor cells there are different kind of electrolytes among them what was there calcium so if there is a sudden lysis of this calcium the tumor cells what will happen to this calcium it will come out it will come out suddenly from this tumor cells and it will what will the body calcium level it will cause sudden increase of calcium level and there is sudden increase of calcium level is a very lethal conditions to your different cardiovascular systems so what what we should do we should do some drugs which causes excretion of this calciums what is the today's drug today furosemide furosemide is given in this conditions to remove the excess amount of calcium which is accumulated in your blood so that's how i want to conclude my the small topic thank you